guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2021 Nissan Versa, courtesy of Hanover Nissan in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so if you value your money let me tell you guys this one starts at a price of under fifteen thousand dollars and i'll get to the pricing in a second here but that also includes of course the new car warranty being three year thirty six thousand mile bumper to bumper five year sixty thousand mile power trains it's one of those deals almost do you want a used vehicle with no warranty or do you want a new vehicle with a warranty starting at under fifteen thousand dollars but anyways in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking to steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. I'd say there will be three different trim levels for the new 2021 Versa. First one being the S starting at $14,980 SV for $17,790. And lastly, the one we have today being the SR starting at $18,390. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Versa is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 122 horsepower at 6300 rpm 114 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through your choice of either a five speed manual which does come standard on the s that is going to be that trim level below 15,000, or a CVT, which you can get on the S trim level, but it comes standard on the other two trim levels. But all in all, zero to 60 comes in at approximately 9.7 seconds, which we're gonna test out in a little bit, but on paper, that of course ain't all that quick, but MPG numbers coming in at 27 in the city, 35 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so that before we do that acceleration test, I did wanna mention something to you guys. There is actually a sport mode on the Versa and that button is actually hidden just underneath the shift knob there. It's gonna be a horizontal line so you can't even see it from the driving position. It is that hidden but it is there. So that's why I have to mention it because it is hidden. But anyways, that of course is going to adjust things like the throttle response and the shift point. So having now got that out of the way, what do you say? Let's go ahead and hit that button and it did immediately downshift for me. So it is gonna hold the RPMs at a much higher level giving me more power on demand and now that is done. Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put this thing into the test and let's see how quickly we can get up to speed. All right, I think this is gonna be a straightaway. Here we go. <laughs> well, you can hear it, but <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not the quickest thing in the world. And honestly, if you did one a little bit quicker, the Sentra's price range isn't that far off. You could always try that. Um, that's the car I just got done driving and that is noticeably quicker, of course, than the Versa here, but yeah, it's not the quickest thing in the world. I'll just put it that way. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 10 inch ventilated front discs in the back, eight inch solid rear drum brakes, which by the way, do come standard for every single trim level. But that does give this one a 60 to zero stopping distance of 124 feet, which is plenty respectable. Still, that's pretty average, I would say, for sedans of all sizes, really. So it's not that bad. As far as braking feel goes, it's not that bad. Not as nice as the center i recently got done driving but it's certainly not bad at all so no issues with the braking touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back torsen beam rear axle front and rear stabilizer bars as well as far as ride quality goes as I am hitting probably the most bumpy road in Hanover right now, it's not bad. I will say you can definitely feel more of the road than I did in my test drive of the Sentra. I literally just got done driving. So I will say that as far as steering feel goes, it's pretty much as expected, not the heaviest steering feel in the world, but I would say it's definitely more on the loosey goosey side. We'll just put it that way. So wouldn't mind it a heavier steering feel in the Versa, but as far as cabin noise goes, eh, it's okay, it's not that bad. I've definitely heard worse. I will say if you were to go with like a Kia Rio or a Hyundai Accent, you got more cabin noise in those as opposed to here in the Versa. So I do commend Nissan for that. You're not gonna of course get the most serene cabin in subcompact cars like this one, but having said that, it's not bad. I will say that, but anyways, touching then on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Absolutely no issues there whatsoever, thanks to the shape of this one, but 
That about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 Nissan Versa. All right, so here she is, you guys, finished in electric blue. In case anybody was curious of the exterior color name we had on this one here. So let me go ahead and start up front. Chrome V-Motion front grille is going to come with the S and S V-Trim levels. However, that will get switched up to a dark Chrome V-Motion front grille, which is currently what you guys are looking at, of course, for the SR trim level, in case anybody was curious. But then, to the sides, halogen projector headlights coming with the S and S V-Trims. Automatic feature, of course, coming with that as well, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard with that. But then, if you jump up to the SR that we have today, you're actually gonna get LED headlights, which is pretty darn cool. It's gonna give you extra illumination at night, of course, with LED signature lighting to go along with that. And just below it all, fog lights, you guys can see it the bottom portion of that front bumper then as well which is pretty darn cool it's an awesome look i gotta say but anyways that about rounds out the front let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the versa here and so now since we are around to the side of this one black window surrounds do come standard power adjustable side mirrors do come standard for all trim levels if you go with the s or sr trims you're going to get gloss black finish to those side mirrors that of course is what you guys are looking at right now body color finish however is going to come with the sv trim level then also heated side mirrors with LED integrated turret signals if you were to go with the SV or SR. Black door handles with the S, otherwise you're going to get body colored door handles with the SV and SR of course. And then take a look down at the wheel configuration. 15 inch steel wheels with covers for the S trim level. 16 inch aluminum alloys for the SV and 17 inch aluminum alloys then for the SR and that of course is what you guys are looking at right now. One more thing I wanted to mention, you guys can see there is a floating roof line finished in gloss black towards the back of this one then as well but now speaking of let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one and so but now since we are around to the back body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top just below that rear spoiler is going to come with the sr trim level of course you're going to get some trim level badging back there as well just below it all body color rear diffuser for our sr trim it looks so dang good underneath there but we'll say single exhaust outlet tucked away for all trim levels across the board so having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the Versa, when it comes to opening the rear trunk, there are a couple different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob that is one way, but there is also then a button on the trunk itself that of course is the other way. But once opened up, cargo capacity is actually going to differ, believe it or not, amongst the trim levels. S trim is going to give you 14.7 cubic feet, and then if we were to go with the SV or SR, it's going to bump that up to 15 cubic feet even. So not a huge difference, but a slight difference. So I do want to mention that, but that was not enough space. Of course, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. And of course, found in that cargo area as well, you do have some cargo lighting back there. And if you lift up the cargo floor, you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat in case anybody was curious of that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the rear leg room. So you can imagine with this being a subcompact, this is going to be not the best rear leg room. It comes in at 31 inches even. For reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is actually me sitting behind my own driving position. So although it's not the best rear leg room, I do like that there's some give on the back portion of the front seat. So if you have a slightly taller guy like myself, you can push your knees into the back of those front seats as opposed to the plastic backs that will not allow you to do that, of course. So I did like that, but anyways, no rear center armrest with cup holders, but to my surprise, dual USB charging ports. I love that. So if you have two kids back there, both of them can charge up their tablets. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating coming with all trim levels across the board. Premium cloth coming with the SV. Sport cloth then coming with the SR with some orange accents, of course. That's what you guys are looking at. And I did want to mention there are optional heated front seats for the SR. We actually do have that option there today. So that is pretty darn cool. I'm enjoying these heated seats on this 40 some degree day in spring here in PA. But anyway, seating 
was pretty comfortable, not as comfortable as the Sentra, but pretty comfortable, I will say that. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped only for the SR trim level, in case you were curious. Then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. All of your buttons are located on one side of the key. Nissan logo at the top, of course, in case anybody was curious what that circular button is. That is going to be your remote start, which only comes standard on the SR that we have today. So that's gonna allow you to warm this thing up before actually getting inside on super cold days in Pennsylvania, kind of like today. But anyways, push button start also only coming for the SR trim level. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter there. And so when it comes to the gauges, this is quite a unique gauge cluster. You do have your speedometer in analog form all the way to your right, but then the full left portion of the gauges, it's all digital, which I kind of like. Wish it would have been all digital, but anyway, still, this isn't that bad. Outside temperature, you could check out up there how many miles you have left until you hit empty. To control what is on that digital portion, by the way, there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel, in case anybody was curious about that. You can choose to display a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to. There's some safety information. You can actually choose to display a tachometer up there in digital form, which I personally would leave it on. I think that looks pretty darn cool. And right in the middle of that is how many miles you have left until you hit empty, which I also love. So. That is what I am actually gonna leave it on. I like that, but anyways. Now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Automatic climate control is going to be optional for the SR trim level only, yet another option that we do have here today. But essentially what that means is you just set the temperature that you want it to be at and it's automatically gonna find that temperature for you. But otherwise, it's gonna be your traditional climate control system. It's pretty easy to use. But overall, I don't mind the interior quality that we have here today. I like the orange stitching. It's different. I like different just above the the passenger side glove box you have this soft feel with this orange contrast stitching which i absolutely love that i will say that you do have some hard material found on the doors but other than that for the price point that's really all i can knock it for just in front of the shifter you have a decent amount of storage there 12 volt power outlet usb charging port and an auxiliary port just behind the shifter you have your dual cup holders and within the center armrest by the way there's a little button on the top of it to open it up but anyways within the center armrest probably one of the smaller amounts of storage you can find but I do like the little coin holders just in front of that little bit of storage, although everything's going digital these days anyways. But anyways, I did want to mention it's pretty cool that there are coin holders there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. Seven inch color touchscreen display does come standard across the board. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for the SV and SR trim levels only. So I did want to mention that. Radio information, of course, you could check out up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, Systems. For the S and SV trims, you're going to get four speakers. For the SR, then you're going to get six speakers. So, having said that, that is the sound system that we have today. So, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. I got to be honest, the bass was kind of pretty darn good for a six speaker sound system. That was not that bad. I kind of liked it, I gotta admit. But anyways, there are of course better sound systems out there, but that one wasn't bad. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this one in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, taking up the entire screen, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety and so front side side current airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well you don't always get that in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats for your child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but actually nissan does a pretty darn good job at putting a bunch of advanced safety features coming standard on this one even for the bottom trim level you get forward collision warning automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection lane departure warning high beam assist i love that feature reverse automatic braking then as well and if you were to go with the sv or sr that is going to add to that blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and a driver attention monitoring system then as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the versa great starting price point how many cars these days do you guys see starting at under fifteen thousand dollars none Maybe the Mitsubishi Mirage, I don't know, but still, that is an incredible price point these days. Great standard safety, high beam assist rarely 
comes standard on most vehicles out there. So I love that it's standard here on the Versa. Pretty good exterior styling, and gotta admit, it's definitely not too bad looking for this segment. As far as the room for improvement goes, this is potentially the slowest vehicle I've driven all year, so definitely not the quickest thing. And again, if you want it quicker, the Sentra isn't that much more expensive and it is pretty substantially quicker, so I will say that. And also, would have liked to have seen Android Auto Apple CarPlay on the base trim level as well. So definitely helps out with navigation purposes, at least if you have a smartphone, having that displayed on that infotainment screen. But all in all, in the end, I would say my top three for this segment would have to be the Hyundai Accent, Kia Rio, and the Nissan Sentra. This one is going to be quieter. The other ones are gonna have better warranty. So kind of just drive them all. It's ultimately gonna come down to personal preference. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.